Firecrackers Bird. My name is Ashley Chevalier, and I am back for the last segment of this week's Rhythm and Muse with our special guest, Mark Cherms. In the last segments, we discussed uh, the Chancellorsville Turning Point uh, painting that he has done, which captures Stonewall Jackson at his moment uh, where he got shot. Uh, we talked a little bit about the processing and the sketches that go into d developing the painting and we're going to delve a little bit more into that process now uh, a little bit with that painting and then with the other painting that we have um, behind here in the studio. Mark, can you explain um, this the rest of the sketching yep. option that you have here? Yep, so one of the stages that I do um, uh, once I've um, actually pose the scene uh, from some of my earlier sketches with a live model. In, in this case, I actually posed for it myself. So I'll set it up and actually, I actually use a green screen uh, using modern technology today. Okay. And uh, so um, then I pose each, each individual figure, photograph them in, in costume or whatever costume I have that's available. Very intense. Um, and um, then, um, then I'll do a detailed pencil sketch based on the uh, the composition and sometimes I went, if I have a lot of the information uh, for example if I'm painting a modern US Army soldier and he has all the gear I'll actually skip this sixth stage and actually just do a Photoshop sketch because that information is already there but it, when I posed for this obviously I didn't have all the all the gear um, uh, all the Civil War uh, accoutrements so um, I actually did a pencil sketch based on on uh, myself posing for this scene, but I do use a lot of uh, live models and reenactors and that kind of thing. Live models and reenactors, so this is get, may, may I look at that for sure. a second? So this gets pretty intense here um, with um well, it gives an opportunity for fine tuning the painting as well. So I, I'm trying to make all my mistakes on in this, at the sketching stage rather than because of all the detail once, that you yeah. have here, you have to work all of that out. Yeah. So so you have an, a research stage. And you have a live formation stage, mm -hmm. um, and you have this sketching stage, which obviously there's several versions of the sketches. Mm -hmm. But you said before you even do the cut, and, and you, that might involve Photoshop and video and all that different yeah. stuff. <laughs> but then you've got the first stage. You said you do color sketches, which I thought would come after the pencil sketches. And you've got examples of that for this painting behind us here. Yeah. Um, these are the these are the very first sketches that you do of a painting. Uh, no, actually, the the black and white uh, the rough black and uh, white pen up. sketch that we talked about earlier is the, is the that first. Uh, stage. And okay. actually, I got that from working in an architect's studio. My boss uh, told me, uh, you know, when you're sketching and, you, and you're doing a job, uh, you know, don't do anything that you're not getting paid for, basically. So uh, I, he, we had this sketching process when we were working on architectural projects, and I kind of uh, co opted that into my art. Uh, business. So, um, and also from a, a business point of view, um, I actually you know, you're, you're doing this work, so the idea is that you get paid for it eventually. So I actually retain these sketches and then will sell the sketches. And it's, some way that, it's a way that somebody can own a piece of original art that isn't the cost of a larger original. So that's kind of nice. That, it's that also just a neat thing. That. It's yeah. different. Not everybody's going to have this. So this painting here um, is one you'll see in Fredericksburg at the Visitor Center um, on the battlefield. And uh, this is actually, um, when you go to the Visitor Center, the Visitor Center is down here. The car park's down here. This is the the famous uh, wall where the Confederate uh, <coughs> army uh, used uh, like a sort of redoubt, like an emplacement to uh, fend off the uh, Union assaults. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, gun emplacement is actually still on the top of the hill, but it's just a small mound, and I actually didn't even realize it was there at, at the time. But if you go um, up above the visitor center, there's just a little small rise, and there are actually two huge trees going, growing out of it at the moment. And actually, the, the where they have the guns placed, which uh, this is actually for uh, history enthusiasts, this is uh, Squire's guns of the Washington Artillery, which is a kind of famous Confederate uh, artillery unit in the war. And um, the the guns that they have on the, on the battlefield at the moment are actually about placed about here. So when you're actually up at the guns, you can. You can see this, this, this slight rise, but I didn't even realize it was, it was there. I had the, the National Parks pointed out to me, but it is actually still there. Um, and then this is uh, the Innes House, which is uh, on the battlefield. This is the Stevens House. If you go to the, to the battlefield now, there's just the well or the, a reconstruction of the well. This house is no longer there. This house is Stratton House. No, Stratton still, House, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is a painting is called Unerring Fire. And um, once I'd done the rough uh, concept sketches, um, I uh, did uh, quick color sketches, and I used these sketches as uh, 
kind of storyboards for my photo shoot. So when I'm using live models or, or models, I'll, um, this is my rough guide. And I'm trying to work out the colors that I might use okay. um, when I come to the actual painting rather than trying to figure that out when I'm actually uh, doing doing the final piece. And these itself. feel like they're actually on some uh, kind of canvas. These are, uh, these are on canvas board, and you can get that from uh, any local art supply store. Now, what are these on? These are on, these, um, I, p I paint on several medium. Uh, linen is uh, something I paint on quite a bit on, as a final painting. It's much stronger than canvas, and it will outlast canvas. Um, and it has an uneven texture, so when you photograph it, you don't get that sort of moray effect sometimes that you can get with the canvas. Um, this uh, is painted on uh, board. The, the uh, Park Service specifically requests that work for some of their images because uh, this painting, although I painted it at, at uh, 24 by 36, will actually be blown up quite large. It'll be in, enlarged a, a great amount. And uh, at that, when, it's, when it's big, you'd actually see the grain of the canvas. So um, they didn't want to see the grain of the canvas. So it's that's a smooth board, gesso board. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yes, so, and so. again, you can get that from. Uh, many art supply stores, but it's worth bearing in mind if you are doing a painting that you're going to digitally <coughs> enlarge. Um, it's uh, worth bearing in mind that uh, you know that that's available for you. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. if you're going to blow it up. You want to watch out for the grains. It makes sense, just like Depending if you had an image. What effect you want? Yeah. Right. I mean, you might want the grain. Well, that's you know. true too. Um, mm -hmm. But if you had a photo, sh a photo, you have to be careful of how it blows up because of the pixels mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but you had mentioned something else that was a good tip. Uh, something about di digital imagery. Um, on the show, I always like to encourage artists. And in Fredericksburg, for those of you who watch the Rhythm and Muse, you know that I like to encourage you to pursue your art and your music and, uh, and your personal expression. And uh, every tip you can get, especially from uh, the world-class artists that are here in this area, and um, the special guest that we have today is definitely worth it. Uh, something about di digital imagery. Uh, you went through the stages, the sketches. Sketches are a way people can own art. This is, you know, mm -hmm. another capture the process, and people people would be interested. I know I would be interested. I, I don't know that I could afford, you know, <laughs> that, but I, you know, I might be able to afford a sketch. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and but you said, what what about the digital capture it all digitally? Um. Well, you know, technology is changing. Um, I actually have a four by five film camera, which is a basically a large film camera mm -hmm. that will take very, very detailed photographs of uh, of the final uh, piece. But uh, now, of course, cameras um, every every year the the uh, amount of information that can be stored on a digital file is is getting bigger and bigger on your camera. Right. And uh, my advice to artists would be to shoot. Um, their artwork at the highest possible resolution that they can afford okay. um, because um, everything's changing in, in that regard and a photograph that you took on a camera five years ago in a few years time might not be good enough quality to publish. Interesting. So. Well, um, we are coming at the end of our segment, mm -hmm. and there's so much um, that we've covered. Uh, Fredericksburg, I hope that you've enjoyed this. I, I most certainly have. I think it's really neat um, to have an uh, internationally traveled and, <laughs> and, and uh, resided guest um, painting our, our local history and our American history. Um, people can go to markcherms.com to find out more about you. Yep. And of course, markcherms.com. They also um, sell some of the postcards at the... Um, uh, visitor center on, okay. the, on the battlefield there, and your work is hanging all around through the historic, the historic uh, visitor centers and in locations. Elder it, House it will be. They, they're House. renovating them this year, and the, um, they'll be they'll be up. And, when, and the you just had an exhibit with Silver and Companies and Celebrate Virginia Live. Yes, right? uh, Silver Companies commissioned uh, a bunch of uh, uh, paintings uh, on Fredericksburg history. Now they will be properly revealed whenever uh, they uh, are able to build the little museum that they have planned, which will be just about Fredericksburg history. So they have a lot of paintings. Um, I think That's they've got cool. about 60 or 70 or more at the moment. How about um, that? And I did not know that Silver mm -hmm. and Companies have that in store for our community. I think that's really great. Um, and we are going to show you, Fredericksburg, some of the other paintings because he's painted all kinds. He said he's painted over 500 paintings in his career, mm -hmm. covering equestrian to medieval to, you know, the, this, these military segments here. He's not just a military artist. He's done decorative art and had his art in hotels and all over the world. So uh, go to markterms.com, learn, learn more about 
about him. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank I'm you so very much glad. for having me. I've really enjoyed it. And when you see it, when you go to these visitor centers, which you should do with your families and your friends, a great way to get some exercise and enjoy the outdoors. Uh, step inside the visitor center, pick up a postcard, and uh, look look at the paintings and, and, and see what you can enjoy. In Fredericksburg, remember that the arts are definitely accessible for you and your family, and that even if you can't make it out and you don't, hey, I don't really want that piece of art, you can make your own. And I always encourage you to do that. Go mm -hmm. out and play some music, go out and paint some paintings, you know, sketch a sketch. It's all yours. That's all it is. Uh, and it's something that you can do just for yourself. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you next week with a new episode of Rhythm and Muse.